Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel, my name is Paul. Today in this video I'm going to show you uh, some of the things I do to overwinter my plants. Basically I have a lot of tropical plants I keep outdoors in pots and as well other gardening uh, related tasks I usually need to complete in the fall. So I have to bring in the potted plants and do a lot of other things. So this video will show you what I typically do in the fall. She takes me a day or two to get everything inside and the garden ready for winter. So I live on the water and this time of year the colors are just spectacular. It's just so beautiful and uh, because I'm a bit in the valley things get overgrown quickly. So the garden needs a little fall maintenance. It's going to be a quick Luna Go Shishu. Go Shishu. It's going to be a quick tour before uh, of my patio here before I start bringing in plants. Uh, it's time because uh, to bring them in for winter because uh, soon, uh, on Monday actually, today's Saturday. On Monday it's going to be negative temperatures, minus 2, so I need to bring these in. It's quite a lot, so I have my work cut out for me. So, just the final look. Some of my pot plants, I have palms, I have cannas, I have uh, new things I picked up this year, lots of cannas and Laquat and the biggest pot is this citrus that I have uh, this giant planter so that's that's all the stuff I need to bring in the second biggest is this thing which is a bird of paradise hasn't bloomed for me yet but hopefully it will all right so Turn on the light. This is the other corner where I have plants. Put on some plants. Dogs making a racket eating. And just kind of group them in corners. I have to uh, still find pots for these. Um, so I just put them in garbage bags just for now so they don't get blasted by the cold weather minus two on Monday and this is the current mess in the backyard not sure what I'm gonna do with this it's too tall to fit into the house so that's that's one big issue and I do have to end the dog his favorite toy, Miss Piggy. Luna, go get it. All right. So just another shot of the room where most of the plants are gonna overwinter. This is a dining room basically. Uh, just uh, this year I tried to stack it because watering was a problem and I just reaching into the corners and then spilling water all over so I did put in a plastic tarp on the ground I do have all of these uh, but these large I think they're cooking uh, serving trays basically plastic serving trays most of them I do have a few metal ones better quality but uh, but basically so this is a good quality one a metal tray from Dollarama. I looked for them this year though, did not see any, at least in the Dollarama next to me. Um, and this is just a plastic painter sheet. And what I need to do is, uh, I do have these up on, most of these, up on these plastic risers, plant risers. So, this is what I usually put the pots on. Just kind of 
kind of stick together. Just risers basically. And the risers keep them off the ground, so basically makes it possible for, I think, uh, less uh, cold transfer from the ground into the flower pots. So hopefully they'll grow better, or at least they won't get uh, cold feet, basically, I'm hoping. Hey, here, 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 here. It's the next day and it's time to bring in some of the other plants I left out yesterday. Um, these are plants that are in the ground, so I have to dig out particularly a really large banana and set banana and a trumpet vine. Um, not trumpet vine, but trumpet, the uh, trumpet flower. So it's a cold, rainy October, end of October day. So not really looking forward to this. So let's see what I have to bring in and then we'll see how it goes. But uh, basically I brought in most of the plants. So here's the room, how it's looking. This is the main room, turn on the light. The main room where most of the flowers are gonna be. Uh, I do plan to take down the trumpet vine that took over that window. So there's more light, so that's one of the things I need to do. And then this is the other corner. Some stuff. So this is the banana I have to cut down. It's my size for reference. Let's see if I can. See how tall it is. It's actually taller than I am. And so I have to put that inside. I have to uh, free up this window. I got covered by the trumpet vine and and I have these uh, I have a climbing rose here still one blooming it's the rose and was a bird that was nesting in here It's end of October and I'm about to dig out a few plants for overwintering. One of them is this, uh, the main one is this Anset banana. That's really big. It's basically my height. If I back up, it's even taller than I am. So I have to dig this one out and this angel trumpet which hasn't flowered for me this year, it did flower last year and this is a This is a hardy windmill palm that I do put in the ground. It, it's very disappointing, it doesn't really grow that much. It's been very slow growing for me. So I'm not sure why. It doesn't seem to do too well. There's two of these.
this is almost ready. Came out pretty well. Okay, let's get it closer to the house. repot this plant I purchased this date palm for only $19 just a few days earlier fall is a great time to pick up plants on sale one of the benefits of living in southern Ontario is the proximity of multiple greenhouses I believe this is North America's largest concentration of greenhouses so there's lots of tropical plants you can stop by and pick up at these places from cactuses to uh, other exotic plants. These clips are from a business called Calisanti's Tropical Greenhouse. This greenhouse is only about an hour away in Kingsville which has a wide selection of plants and especially uh, specialty, uh, special interest plants like this area that they have dedicated to bonsai or these hang plants, aeroids. These plants don't need to be potted, they're able to absorb water through their leaves. And as well they have uh, cactuses and even other more exotic things and lots of tropicals. So I'm just going to quickly show you some of the things that caught my eye. Not sure if these cactuses actually do have those colors naturally in nature or is that some sort of pigment but uh, one of the things that they have on display is this fountain filled with succulents. So it's very easy to find interesting plants here and just basically it's for plant enthusiasts and people that like growing plants at home. You can pretty much find anything you want. If you live in Southern Ontario, fall is a great time to visit this place especially if you've never been here before. Highly recommend it.
Okay, so this is the room where I put all the flowers. This is the main room that I have it in. It was a really good workout to get them in here. I do have them uh, in different different rooms. So I try to run a space there, so I try to put them in corners. I do have a few plants that I still don't have pots for. I need to find some pots for these. This is uh, lots of cannas and this is uh, my biggest plant and the biggest pot. This was the heaviest, by far the heaviest thing to take in. A citrus that I grew from seed. And my second biggest pot, second biggest plant is this really large bird of paradise. I believe it's a bird of paradise. So I have to, uh, this one's not so heavy to bring in. And this year, my um, Bakuat, this is Japanese plum basically, Bakuat grew quite a bit, so it's doing very well. And one other plant I need to bring in are my, uh, my agaves. So these are two agaves. Let me turn on. This is one agave, I have them in these pots. And my ancient bananas. Thank you for watching. And I do plan to make another video from the entire season in my garden from spring to fall. And hopefully I'll show you some of the beautiful plants I grow in my zone 6 B garden. And I'm just gonna leave you with some drone clips of fall in Southern Ontario. Mm -hmm.